Hello, I'm Dr. Maria Cylindro, specialist in integrative uh, anti-aging medicine, practicing in Pasadena, California. Today, I would like to discuss about something called critical illness. I would like to make a disclaimer. I'm not an insurance agent, not trying to sell you any insurance. But uh, this critical illness terminology is used many times in many of health and life insurance policy. Original terminology um, became popular when Dr. Marius Bernard, uh, who is a cardiologist, proposed uh, a coverage of patients while they are alive instead when they are dead. He is a cardiac surgeon who in 1967, he um, did his first heart transplant. If you remember that, he reviewed one of his woman's patient's case with lung cancer, who suffered for two years, oh, who suffered for two years after his surgery because he made the cancer return and became worse. No, because uh, when she returned, the cancer became worse and then she died. Dr. Bernard said the patient had no money and had to go back to work uh, to feed the family. And after she died, the money uh, from the life insurance start paying and covered the bur bur burial. So th this is clear that uh, she did not get the uh, life benefit or coverage while she was she, while she needs the coverage the most, uh, which tried to recover from the cancer. After that case, several diseases are considered as critical illness, which can be a major cause of death. Total of these critical illnesses is about 36 that are included in critical illness. Most requires recovering period and allowing the body to rest, which allowing the body to rest um, and receive good healthy treatment to recover. Some conditions end up with disability and will also change the outcome of the patient's future ability to function. This may change also the patient's previous skill and maybe previous income. The life expectancy in America for men is 76 to 79 years and 78.6 to 86.3 years for women. This fact has many things to do on the effort of the medical doctors to put prognosis accordingly. Today, according to the statistics put um, in medical health, there are 300,000 deaths a year of heart attack and stroke. 100,000 new cases of stroke every year. 10,000 total with 500 new cases of kidney disease every year. Carcinoma or cancer of the lung were diagnosed in 240,000 people every year. What if you can live longer, but healthier and functional? To stay healthy, people do not need drugs, but they need healthy lifestyle and healthy medical food. What is medical food? Medical food is a food-based supplements that has a medicinal effect and will replace drugs to treat a certain condition. It's not just 
uh, simply vitamins or over-the-counter supplements. These are those based on experience of scientific papers. Health insurance only pay when you are sick. Now we know that. That is if you have a good one. Some health insurance are pretty bad. And most of them is helping while you need the Medicare, medical care or a hospital, hospital care only. However, after you are discharged from the hospital, from the hospital care, you must recover. Patients misunderstood, many of them, and due to financial reason, they try to go back to work too early to catch the loss of income during the illness or to support the family when their health might not be fully ready. When it, what if I tell you that you need to repair and replenish what has been stressed by the disease itself? Cancer, for example. 90% are life-threatening, we know that. 30% will survive with five-year survival rate. What does it mean? That means most cancer, after they are diagnosed and treated by conventional method, they don't last more than five years. Survival means slow progress and the course can can be very miserable in cancer. They cannot usually go back right away to work. Most of them needs medical food. Remember that? Vitamins and detoxification. Some of them receive chemotherapy that are very toxic. And this toxicity can affect other problems in their health. But detoxification, vitamins, or medical food are not covered by their health insurance. What about stroke? Everyone knows what stroke is. That's when the uh, lesions or unstable protein lesions breaks and it travels and then clogged one of the arteries or a small circulation in the brain and you have stroke and some of them are very bad stroke where they become disabled. With the stroke condition, patient sometimes cannot walk and they're on the wheelchair. They have to rely on their family as a caregiver. That is when it's called critical because they involve with varieties of difficulties to return to their previous level of function. It is called recuperation period. And it is unpredictable to even to us physicians, even me, I'm a specialist in physical medicine and rehab, unless we follow weeks after weeks or even days after days. Some patients, they can afford it. So we follow as a team to see during the first six months golden period. Who is going to cover that? Nobody. What is the actual critical illness? Critical illness is a terminology which generally involves the big organ failure, heart attack, stroke from the brain or cancer, any type of cancer, because these illnesses often incur greater than average medical cost. Health insurance can cover you when you are not healthy. It is ironic that you are not covered, maintain your health. It should be called sickness insurance or illness insurance, not health insurance right? Health insurance usually reject to cover 
any medical food when you try to take it and to stay healthy. Refuse to cover non-prescription drugs that has no negative side effects. You know you can have a better health by taking a good food-based supplement or medical food. Scientific publications have been written for more than 30 years. They cover prescription drugs. But if this has negative side effects, when are the patients going to get better? You got coverage for oral and intravenous chemotherapy for cancer with clear explanations of negative side effects. They will tell you what's going to happen. Basically, this chemotherapy is very toxic because it must kill the cancerous growth. That's the goal. But when the patient is ready to detox from the chemotherapy effects, most they are all heavy metal based, used in chemotherapy, then none of the detox part or antioxidant, including the most common vitamins and supplement to use like vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin D3, and selenium that will naturally free, uh, uh, catch the free radicals, none of these are covered. Where is the health word in health insurance reflect in this example? Another condition, for example, is uh, cirrhosis hepatis or frozen liver. A condition or actually is precancerous condition of liver cancer. Basically, the liver is frozen, it's not functioning. The doctor said, nothing else we can do. We are going to put you on the liver transplant list. No, they're, they're long. Okay. In the meantime, the patient might not be able to work or perform their usual job. They, are, they don't feel good in, in this uh, diagnosis. They don't feel good. The body uh, is tired fatigue, but nothing is covered except liver transplant and the antiviral medication, perhaps. And if you want to detox your liver, you must pay on your own. Patients usually are sick, tired, and because they are toxic, they, the detox organ, liver is the, a big detox organ, not working. Most people know that you need products like milk thistle, resveratrol, but no insurance will cover that. The most common one is, of course, heart attack, critical illness, heart attack. This covers 50% cause of death. If you go to the hospital, your health insurance cover covers that medical cost while you are in the hospital. As soon as you are discharged to home, they only cover the drugs to suppress your cholesterol, which might not be the real cause of heart attack. The LDL particle elevation causing the unstabilization or plaque Plaque has two kinds. One is hard, one is soft. This could be the hard one that close or clog the artery, the big artery to the heart. Statin is the most common prescribed drugs by cardiologists or any doctors that think that you need to lower your cholesterol, which is the mother of hormone. This prescription is also protocol prescription after heart attack. Four pages side effects on a statin is in a PDR. 
which is the physician drugs reference, which is available in the market. You can all also buy it and you want to know what are the side effects of any drugs prescribed by physician are all in there. And it costs, the starting drug costs fatigue. The medication is covered, but nothing to improve your heart function, such as vitamin C, alpha ketoglutaric acid, L-lysine, L-proline, which is amino acid, and certain omega-3, like, uh, but luckily, recently, I found out some insurance cover EPA omega, which is very good to lower the LDL. Those that I mentioned just now is medical food for the wall of the cardiovascular uh, system. None, none of those are covered. Professor Linus Pauling, the Nobel Prize winner of vitamin C, has stated that good amount of fat-soluble vitamin C will help you prevent heart attack. Patients are told that the heart attack might come back if they don't take the medication and change their lifestyle. I agree. In the meantime, generally the patients will feel fatigue and it takes weeks to recover or even years if they need to lose weight, for example, as well, right? Some lost their main job and they might go back to their work six to 12 months later when they have the energy, if they are lucky. Many things called medical food are available, such as bergamot to lower the low density lipid that cause the soft black or EPA omega and also extra virgin olive oil and high dose of antioxidant as well as amino acid that can replenish their mitochondria and improve their energy. But you have to buy it on your own. You have to know this. If they do not have any of those helps, most of the patient will recover very slow and might not reach near their previous function. Don't forget, some of them started with non-healthy condition before they have heart attack. If they force themselves to go back to work and settle with the available covered drugs, they will feel fatigue, weak, and not healthy. It can be from the side effect of the prescription medication itself. Both terminal and critical illness refer to serious medical conditions. There's a little difference. But the difference is that critical illness refers to a specific serious injury, illness, or medical episodes, which has a chance to recover with or without disability. That's a critical illness. Whereas the terminal diagnosis means your hospital consultant or physician or the experts um, that says the illness will lead to death within the next 12 months. Most of these patients are not in their best conditions and usually they should not go back to work. Most of them are not capable to go back to work anyways. Staying at home makes them lose their income. Majority of these patients do not have coverage for medical food or energy booster within the categories of health products. What about survival period? Don't forget, survival period also is in your critical illness coverage. This is another terminology when you are not looking into your coverage for your critical illness. 
because this is the length of the time one must survive after the diagnosis of critical illness before they get coverage. See, I'm not an insurance agent, so you have to check with your insurance agent. From the integrative medicine point, which me as a physician, my view is I see very clear the disadvantage of current health insurance, which does not support health only more supporting illness and drugs. I'll go down the list, show you what kind of condition are called critical illness. But the goal for me to share about this overview so you can realize of the disease with some of them have preventive care. You can prevent it if you want it. Especially when you're young enough, you can do that, okay? So the first is cancer of specific severity. Patient will survive, but requires significant months to recover so he or she can go back to previous production function stage. The convalescence period varies in the length of time from one person to the other. Some cancer is caused by poor lifestyle. This treatment can be very costly. The best way is to prevent this cancer. You need to detox, mm -hmm. careful diet, and some nutrition if need be. Make sure you exercise and reduce stress to reduce the risk. See, now you can see you can prevent this. So you don't, if you don't have critical illness coverage, this is the insurance that you don't need the critical illness coverage. You think you don't need it, then you better do it so you can prevent the disease itself. Heart conditions, there are many on the list of critical illness because it covers 50% of cause of death. One of them is called angioplasty or you know, when they put a stand placement, it is preventable for sure because the cause is arterosclerosis due to fat and sugar in your diet. Yes, they are advised after placement of the stand is to not lift heavy object, avoid sternous exercise, Avoid sexual activities for weeks, wait at least a week before swimming or bathing. Right now, if you don't have this condition, please do all the necessary lifestyle changes to prevent it. Now, other heart condition mm -hmm. has similar cause, heart attack, valve or aorta surgery, right? Now, the the, the the last one is cardiomyopathy for, for the heart. This is weakness of muscle of the heart. This can be terminal illness. Usually the cause is not found. Now this is the only one that I cannot say why you have cardiomyopathy, but dental disease is linked to cardiomyopathy. So your preventive measure is to take care of your oral hygiene and your teeth and don't forget to move and exercise again. How about the uh, cardiac artery bypass? It's the same. That is a recuperation of that take months. So it's very expensive. And this is due to scleroarthrosis of the wall. Lung, which is big organ, includes in critical illness. And those are primary pulmonary hypertension. I hope I can do one YouTube on this pulmonary hypertension because it's very interesting. And then chronic lung disease, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Now, you must probably guess what is the cause. Cigarette mm -hmm. smoking. So don't smoke cigarettes. Just stop if you are doing 
Do, if you're smoking, just stop. You can stop. And if you need help, go ask your doctor to help. You can stop it before you have this COPD. Some patients are very lucky. They get another lung for the lung transplant and they can live. But many are not. Okay. Now, there are many more like blindness from diabetic retinopathy, they cannot see anymore. Deafness, that's from dangerous sport like shooting. Now, if you know that you have to wear um, air um, uh, earplug during shooting uh, training, you should do that, okay? Loss of limb. Now, how do you lose your limb? Besides accident, diabetes. You have gangrene and they cut uh, your limb. So, how about deafness? Yeah, there are many other causes. Um, aphasia is uh, an ability to talk after stroke. Loss of independency, you become dependent. Now that one is um, also, you know, let's say stroke patient become dependent of somebody else. Major burns victims take a long time to recover. These are crit critical illnesses. Chronic liver disease, we mentioned that. And kidney fa failure uh, could be from diabetes. And major organ or bone marrow transplant take months to recover. Stroke that has permanent symptoms, permanent paralysis of the limb, stroke resulting permanent symptoms. These are all critical illnesses. People who are undergoing brain surgery, for example, tumor of the brain or cancer of the brain. Another condition is called aphalic. Some people, they survive. They are awake. They are responsive, but they cannot move. It's called aphalic. It's, there, it's called vegetat vegetative signs, it's like vegetable. It's not coma. Now, coma also is a critical illness mm. and a major head trauma or brain injury. It's very sad. That one also is one of them. What about autoimmune like uh, lupus? This is uh, the one that has complication to the kidney. Mm. It will go into critical illnesses. Other things that we do not know the cause, like Alzheimer's, although the neurologists now think that is an insulin resistant or diabetic type three. Parkinson's, we don't know the trigger, could be heavy metals. Mm. So we have to detox. Motor neuron disease, multiple sclerosis, muscular dystrophy, poliomyelitis. These are conditions, the last four I mentioned, that we do not know what the cost is. We are very lucky we don't have this and we go smooth sailing until we depart. Now, now that you know what is the critical illness, please learn how to stay healthy while aging. Don't settle with just an average healthy criteria, but aim for the above than average. In every test, when it's the range, normal references range, that's an average healthy American if you are in America. Mm. And when something is good, you want to be a little bit above average. When something is bad, you want to be the least in the reference or lower. This, for example, diabetes, 5.0 HbA1c, right? That's the best you want to get when you get your pulse testing, protein unstable lesion, let's say. But if you're 4.8, this means it's bad, it's good. But the 5 until 6, don't be 6.1 because this HbA1c is parameter for diabetes which also can refer to heart condition. If you are healthy and active, then when you are ill, 
you recover faster. This is for sure. Hopefully, you rebound and continue to stay healthy until you passed away. When you ask the American, this is how sad I found out, through a survey, majority of people wants to pass away before age 80. Isn't that sad? They know that after 80 years old, they need a stronger medical food, less or no drugs. And most of the average American cannot afford to pay extra for healthy aging maintenance. I do hope one day insurance company consider the coverage for integrative or complementary medicine. This will help people to stay healthier when they live longer. Let me see who asked questions. Lana Spalling spoke of fat-soluble vitamin C. Is C factors fat-soluble? Yes, Colin. C factor is C ascorbyl palmitate. It is fat-soluble. It stay longer in your body. And so you benefit from the vitamin C. If you take ascorbic acid, ascorbate, whatever, rose hip, all the vitamin C are uh, water-soluble except the ascorbyl palmitate. So when you take the water soluble one, not only that you have to take 10,000 milligram or 20,000 milligram if possible, but once you drink and you pee, it goes out. So it's very temporarily in your body. Yes, we do carry, we do carry C factors. Thank you for asking. What causes tinnitus? Tinnitus is a condition where you have ringing of the ear and you hear uh, sometimes like a um, high pitch, sometimes it's low pitch, but is that is what tinnitus is. It is like vertigo. You have to review, but in general, if you have tinnitus, you go and check. Hopefully it is not something that is outside uh, the, in, in the canal or the ear out outer ear, let's say the cerumen or the, you know, the guck, right? So you, you clean the ear, we flush it out. But if you want to see the inner ear, you have to go to ENT doctor where they can determine if there is any problem that causes the tinnitus. Unfortunately, some people cannot find what the cause and what can help actually like, uh, Pantothen, vitamin B5, pan, pan, pantothenic acid, try that one. And some homeopathic uh, we carry also can try, uh, can help tinnitus or acupuncture can help tinnitus. Okay, thank you. How does one detox from, from the heavy metals? It's a very good question. I would like to take another 30 minutes in a different YouTube, but let me answer very shortly. Heavy metals is uh, considered three plus affinity in our chemistry chart of the metals. And you know, like uh, one plus is like calcium, magnesium, all this that we can benefit is called essential elements. And the heavy metal is three plus like mercury, thallium, aluminum, arsenic, um, lead. Now, all of these can only be bound by another negative charge. Positive, negative, they bind with another metals and then it will, uh, then this one hopefully will come out through your urine or your fecal or faces. Now, how to detox this heavy metal is your questions, right? So we have several, uh, right now we have several options. It used to be very limited option. It used to be we use EDTA. That's a chemical that will bind, will bind 
and we do it through an infusion or uh, IV intravenous drips and people will have to do like maybe 30 to 40 session of that and it has many papers that um well this this one is approved actually by your insurance if you have lead toxicity after the second world war uh, many people have lead toxicity and then uh, so this is uh, the treatment for that now what about um, glutathione you can also bind these heavy metals with glutathione and if you use um, there is a product you know I'm not doing or paid by their company but I endorse this product called Pure body, pure body extra strength, which is a sub, sub type of zeolite. It's called clinoliptolite. And this one also binds those. You spray it in your mouth and then it will, uh, it will bind the heavy metals and take it through your urine. And it works, uh, I think after five hours, you have to respray it again. This can be tested uh, by uh, 24 hours urine heavy metals and then we retest it after maybe three or four months and then retest it again until when it's all bounded and pulled from your fat muscle or bone that's where heavy metals are then you will not see it in your urine testing so that's uh, I would like to answer it just like that first then I will would like to do a full YouTube on a heavy metals and detoxification, okay? How does one know if they have heavy metal toxicity? The 24 hours urine testing is very uh, good. Uh, we provoked you with, we provoke your heavy metals by giving you a high amount of, for example, DMPS or DMSC that is also a binder. And then when after you take that one, you collect your urine 24 hours and then shake it and then get some samples and ship it to the lab. Dr. Steda does that. And then after uh, we know that you bind a lot in your urine, that means there are more than that because that's only one provocation. Now, my advice, if you detox heavy metals, don't stop. Because if you stop and on and off, you relocate the heavy metals. When you, If you want to bind it and keep binding it every day, keep binding it. And usually the average time is about six months to a year. And just keep binding it. That's the oral binder. But if it's uh, through the IV, usually around 40 sessions. After the 20 session, we test. And then we know uh, this is a very ob it's an objective finding. Then we know how, how you're doing. Another way to test this is through your hair. and But this is history, like six months history. I don't use that one. But you can do the follicle hair, and that will tell you if you have heavy metals or not. And another way to do it is through the blood. But again, heavy metal likes to stay in the fat uh, muscles and bone. So if you uh, check your blood and you don't have heavy metal, doesn't mean that you don't have heavy metals. And heavy metal sits in the brain and 80% of our brain is fat. That's why they are there. And that will um, give us a problem with memory. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you so much for all the good questions. And I will see you next time. Okay. Next week. This is Dr. Maria Sulindra, Integrative and Dieting Medicine, practicing in Pasadena, California. If you like, please give like sign and subscribe and share with your friends. Thank you so much.